is up Sailor Guardians, I'm Sailor Snubs. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about Sailor Moon news, merch reviews, and how to's. I have a box and it has a figure inside of it who just came in about a week ago. This is my figure arts zero shot of eternal Sailor Moon. I am so excited. The full name of this figure is the darkness calls to light and light summons darkness figure. This is the newest in the Figure Arts Zero Showette line. These are my favorite figures from Bandai Namco. And next year, we're actually going to be getting a Sailor Cosmos figure as well. I am very excited about showing y'all this beautiful figure and unboxing her for you. I'll let you know my thoughts as well as point out any issues because I know that some folks got some with defects. So if mine does have defects, I will show you those as well. And I'm crazy. I actually ordered two of these. So if this one has lots of defects, I will open the other one and see if that one's any better. If you order these straight from Bandai, then they do come with this tissue paper wrapped on them. So before we unbox her, I do want to take a look at the box itself. So here we have the box on my top down. Up at the top, we do have a sticker that says Tamashi Nation's quality. We also have the Bandai Namco logo, as well as the 30th anniversary in Sailor Moon Cosmos. We have this beautiful print of the Sailor Moon figure here. And and you can see her on the inside. She's wrapped in a bunch of plastic there. Down at the bottom, we have gold foil that says Figure Art Zero Show It, as well as Eternal Sailor Moon in the full name of the figure. We have the Toei sticker signifying this is a licensed item. On the two sides, we have these beautiful prints of the figure. This is pretty much the same as the promo art. I wanted to show you the bottom of this box as well. I love this art of the wings. It's absolutely gorgeous and kind of inspiring in a way. The top of the box also has the Ginzu Isho. We have the legendary silver crystal there. And the back of the box again features some promo art of this figure as well. Let's go ahead and open her and see what we think. Now with a lot of my figure unboxings, I always recommend using a knife or something flat that you can tilt up against the flag so that you don't tear the edges of the opening. Oh, and in case you're wondering how to put her together, that's how you put her together. Bandai always tends to put a lot of tape around the plastic packaging for these figures to keep them intact and not moving around, which I do appreciate. It keeps them from breaking. So here we have the figure on my top-down camera. You can see that she's so big, it's almost hard to get her entire figure into the frame. In fact, I can barely get her in there. Let's take a look at her staff. The staff is really gorgeous. I'm going to try to open it without the knife since there is some tape around the packaging for this as well. You do have to be pretty careful with pieces like this because these can easily break in the center. They are pretty fragile, so I'm going to hold it pretty tenderly with a lot of care. But here at the top, we see the Ginzui Show featured in kind of a translucent plastic. There is some gold paint going on here. Pretty good paint job on here. I don't, ha I don't have any issues. There's a bit of gold missing right here though, just a little speck. So a small flaw, but nothing serious. The wand is kind of a pearlescent white color. It's very, very pretty. I'll put that to the side. And then we have the character. Ooh, it smells like plastic in here. There are quite a bit of pieces of plastic that, that kind of hold her together and keep her from fluctuating depending on like the temperature of the shipment. So I appreciate that they have all this plastic in here. Keeps her safe. Okay, so here is our character. She is one whole piece. She ain't going anywhere. It's pretty cool that you don't have to assemble anything. I appreciate that. These ribbons are really pretty. I like how they are kind of moving around a little bit. Mine was stuck on the wing right there, so I just shifted it over a little bit. Uh, very, very tenderly, very carefully. I like the motion. I really like the motion of her, the backs of her ribbons. That's very pretty. Okay, taking a look at the figure herself up close and personal, I do see some flaws. For example, you can see a line on her belly right here. It looks like a piece of dust or something that is in the paint itself. And you do see a line here, perhaps from molding. It's not too bad overall, but you can definitely see quite a bit of flaws in her torso and in her belly and her rib cage right here. I'm digging the shoulder pads. I love that you can see through the shoulder pads here and the glitter on the pink pieces on her gloves as well as her shoulder pads are very pretty. That's really cool. I love that these are glittery. I see some more flaws in her wings right here and here. 
there's quite a few different little nicks in the paint. It's interesting to me that her hair is not shiny. It looks like they airbrushed a shadow detail onto her hair and then we have that transparent look near the bottom of the tendrils. I do like the transparent look of her hair. I think it's really cool. I think it's supposed to give the character some depth in terms of being able to see through the strands of the hair. It's kind of like real hair. Obviously they can't like single out every single strand of hair when they're making a character like this, but they can give you some translucency near the ends to show like how it's layered. The back of her wings is absolutely gorgeous. I do like how she is positioned on top of these crystals which the crystals could have been done better like they're half translucent half not and you can see the molding where they were put together I would love to see like super shiny crystals or something like that or maybe add some glitter in there for the crystals to make them look super sparkly but I do like the color and she is represented here on top of a column with this gold bottom frame one thing I wanted to point out is her boots I like that you can see where her ankles are kind of shifted where her ankles are turned the boots are a little bit wrinkled on the back and that's like a normal thing you would see with somebody wearing boots but here you see it represented in the character too so that's kind of cool I like that her eternal moon article it has those different colored gemstones to represent each of the sailor guardians that's pretty cool my favorite part is her eyes though Check out her eyes. They're so pretty. There's so many colors and there's so much depth going into her eyes. I really appreciate that. Overall, I do like her expression. I was a little worried that she would look dead inside. We've definitely had that before, but she doesn't look dead inside, so I appreciate that. She's very pretty. Okay, so it took me a little bit of finagling of her fingers here to get them to bend the correct direction, but I was able to push this into place while moving her fingers with my fingernails out of the way so that she was able to hold hold her staff really steadily. I, I do like that we have these little bullets up at the top that kind of give her some friction against it. And this keeps her staff from slipping up and down. So here is our full character. I think she's gorgeous. I think she's really pretty. And I'm so excited that I have her in my personal collection. However, since I ordered two of them, I'm gonna take a look at the second one and see what the flaws look like on that one, given that this one has quite a bit going on in her torso and her wings. So let's take a look at that one. I'm not gonna do another unboxing, that took way too long, but I am going to take her out and then show them side by side. Okay, so here is the second figure's staff. Up at the top, you can see that there is no gold nick in the gold painting. So I think this one looks a little bit better in terms of the paint. Now let's take a look at the figure and see if she also has those issues with her torso. And hers looks pretty dang good. I do not see nowhere near as many flaws in this one as I did in the previous one. Now this one does have a little speck right here, just a teeny tiny little dot. And as you can see, her wings look a lot better too. So side by side, here you can see the first one has that little black mark in the gold foil on the staff. So I like this staff more. And in terms of the two characters side by side, in this one you can see those little marks in her torso. Even the bottom of her bow has a little bit of additional paint kind of dried there. And this one does not have that. So I have to say the second one definitely looks loads better than the first one. Let's take a look at the wings next to each other. So here's the first one with her wings. Right next to her piggy tail is quite a few different little flaws. This one, it does have a little flaw there. There's a nick in the wings, but it's nowhere near as bad. So I am kind of happy that I got two of them because the second one ended up being a lot better. The paint quality looks a lot nicer on it. She looks better overall. So I think in terms of my display, I'm gonna display the nice looking one. I'll keep her in the box. <laughs> Wow, you can definitely see just based on like having two next to each other, how much the paint quality can vary from one figure to another. It's pretty bad. Like, I think that based just on looking at these two side by side, Bandai Namco should do better with their like quality control because there's a big difference in figures depending on which one you buy and like who painted it. Some people be taking their time and making it looking good. 
some people leave globs of paint at the bottom of her bow. So there's a big difference in terms of how your character might look when you get it in the mail. And that could be a huge deciding factor in whether you like your figure or not. So now that you have seen two of these figures side by side and you have seen those differences in the flaws, did you pre-order one and how did yours come in the mail? I would love to know how many people also got really flawed figures or if you got one that looks really, really nice and doesn't have a lot of flaws on it. Let me know down in the comments below and if that was a deciding factor in whether or not you're going to choose to purchase one of these. It definitely gives you something to think about in terms of are these worth it or not? Now, if you are interested in more deep dives on Sailor Moon merchandise like this, definitely hit subscribe down below. I do these kind of reviews all the time. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support on my channel, especially this past year. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Janet.